Welcome everybody to Presence Conference 2021. What a joy to have you with us. I hope you had already a lot of fun uh, the, the last few days and I know there will be so much more for you. Expect more because God is coming. God will touch you. God wants to touch you. God just wants to do more in your life. It's my joy today to be uh, to be MC for this talk show on casting out demons and healing. And I've got the joy, the privilege to have with me four men of God. And it's really an honor for me. And I want to, to just uh, uh, welcome them. First of all, Dennis Balcom from Hong Kong, China. Amen. Oh, God bless you. So, so it's such a privilege to have you with us, really. Thank you. So I'm honored to be here. Thank you. Peter Vance from Stuttgart, Germany. Hi, good to see you. Good to see you too, Peter. Paul Mannering from Windsor, U uh, U uh, England, UK. Hello, good to be with you. And Ben Fitzgerald from uh, Lörrach, Germany. Such, I know we will have so much fun today. I was so much uh, expecting this talk show. I know it will be fun, even if it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's a big subject, casting out demons and healing. But I know it will be fun. I know we will see God move powerfully today, and I know there will be a lot of revelation for your life. I know God wants to do something new. I, I just felt that really God wanted to, to actually um, bring new, fresh revelation on, on deliverance for the church, for, uh, for, for everybody, for pastors also, uh, to see revival in their churches. Amen. Yes, I've got, I want us to, to just talk together. I want to, to, uh, that we answer to one another. I don't want just to ask questions. So just don't, don't hesitate to just answer to, to to say what you have to say and uh, we will go uh, one step at one step at a time and at the end of the talk show we will pray for the sick we will pray for deliverance so stay with us and if you have friends that you know need healing or you know that they, they need to hear that uh, maybe a pastor friend maybe a christian friend that need to hear about casting out demons just send them the link it's very important so they can follow that or so they can learn so they can have revelation for their life so my first question, what do you say to someone who never heard about deliverance uh, or doesn't believe in it or is afraid of it? Ben, you want to start? <laughs> yeah, I thought that might happen then. <laughs> um, first of all, uh, if they're a Christian or a non-Christian, I'd address it differently. If they're a non-believer, surprisingly, it's very, very easy to actually explain that deliverance is necessary and demons are real. I think most people can see um, certain levels of evil in the world and can make a subsequent connection to, um, to that evil. And so I always say, have you ever walked down a dark alley and you feel someone's behind you, you turn around, you don't know why. I say our spirit, man, is sensitive to, to good, to fear, to evil. Uh, so that's not difficult with christians sometimes from different maybe backgrounds and denominations um, i find it presents a theological difficulty at times but again um, every person knows what it feels like to be attacked by the enemy every person knows what it feels like to have it, accusatory thoughts and so uh, when we explain deliverance what we're really talking to somebody about is the freedom that jesus purchased that he wore a crown of thorns that you might have a sound mind and, and the greek word so though soterio means the freedom, fullness of deliverance, salvation, and then obviously healing of the sicknesses and deliverance from demons. So I just explain to them the full package of Jesus is not to leave you in torment. It's to take you out of one camp of the enemy's camp and to bring you completely into the camp of the righteousness of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, we can just explain it, you know, in many, many ways, but I think the best way is to say this, that he delivered us from all evil. And that's just so true. It's in the Lord's prayer. Thank you, Ben. I know there's a lot of people watching us. We have people from Singapore, Indiana, from the UK, from Switzerland, Spain, Lithuania, Michi Michigan, uh, from Norway. Uh, I know there's people from everywhere and I know some of them, uh, they, they, they are afraid of it. Uh, and I know because me, for myself, I was actually afraid of that. I grew up in the Reformed Church. That was not something we talked about, definitely not. And, uh, and when I heard about it, when I saw people actually manifesting, I was like, I don't know what it is, but it's not in my theology, uh, so I don't understand, so I don't believe in it, in a sense. Uh, Paul, wh what do you say to, to the people like that? 
Well, I think one of the things we've got to make sure that we do is that we create the right culture. Um, I mean, one of the big fears I think has been that, um, you know, if you start talking that a Christian might need deliverance, um, they, they've often taken that as some sort of judgment that they are a failed Christian in some way. And uh, there have been so many false beliefs uh, around this over the years, people believing that a Christian can't be uh, demonized um, and therefore doesn't need deliverance. So the first thing that we've got to do is we've got to take away the shame. We've got to take away the fear and, and we've got to get back to the simple truth of what Jesus did for us uh, on the cross and, and that he, he set us free. And it's not about it's not about judgment of us as being failed. Um, it's it's actually what he came to do is to set us free uh, so that we uh, one of the things I, I've been just thinking about recently, I got drawn into thinking about it, is that the freedom that he purchased for us is a freedom to become a part of the family, not so much a freedom to do what we like. And and it's the beauty of that is that we get set free so that we can be full members of this beautiful royal family. And once we're in that family, it, it's not about shame. It's about constantly being cleaned up, being renewed, being refreshed, being revived. And that includes being delivered. That includes making sure that we have a truth in our hearts. So I think first we've got to create a culture. We've got to change the culture. We've got to get away from anything that is condemning of people uh, so that we create an atmosphere and an environment where people can seek help and seek deliverance and seek freedom. Yes, thank you. Just so do you think that everybody needs deliverance? <laughs> well, we, we all need some we all need some degree. Um that's what Christ died for. Whether that is that we are demonized or possessed or whether we are just victims of living in a fallen world and, and we're polluted and dirty and unclean. But, but all of us need setting free and therefore being delivered from something unto something, which is the very nature. If we look at Passover, you look at the, the four truths of the Passover is that we are we are delivered from something and unto something. So it, it, to that extent, yes. Does that mean that everyone's demonized? I think I'll leave that to a, a you know, a theologian like Peter Vence to tell me those answers. But, but we all need setting free uh, in some way or another. That's what he died for. I would love to... to um to add something, we are all uh, um, working in Europe. Uh, Paul and Ben and Dennis were there several times. And I see that there is a major shift in the thinking in the, in the Christian society. There's a, a, a greater awareness that there are demons, that they are working still till today. I remember 30 years ago when I was in the theological seminar, students were still discussing whether there are demons around today or it's over. But today I see a major shift in, in the awareness in the churches. I think also through the internet that people in the, in the churches, they are aware there is an enemy, there is a demon world which is very practical in our daily life and if you look into the non-christian society i agree with ben i mean those guys today they know something about spirit even in the western world many people they have contact with with some crazy experiences with the demonic world and uh what i see in in our area the, the openness to get help has grown incredibly and the awareness that there is a power which comes from God, which is greater than the demonic power. That is some great, great evangelistic um, issue we, we, sh we have to use today. Yeah, it's true. It became so common. Now we can see also with the, I don't know if you saw so, uh, the Nike shoes. Nike um, actually uh, released a new Nike shoes with the Satan Satan shoes with one drop of human blood in it, and I was like, "That is crazy." People are aware of that, and, and they know there's something. So, uh, people, 
I think they are some, some, somehow attracted to that, but uh, so attracted to the spiritual world without knowing that there's something else. So, Dennis, you, you've traveled the world, you, you, you've been so, to so many places, you've preached to, to so many people. Uh, how, how do you help people to see the truth, to see that there's something else, to see that there is actually freedom in the spirit? Yes, well, I've been working as a missionary for 58 years now. Wow. And uh, much of that time has been in mainland China and in India, all throughout Africa, these third world nations. And everybody knows that demons are real. No one will deny that fact. In fact, you have, you know, witchcraft and you have people giving fortune telling that sometimes really comes to pack. In fact, there's a real big business here in Hong Kong. There's a street with hundreds of fortune tellers and they're sometimes very accurate. And uh, they will say that they receive this from a spirit. They don't say that the Holy Spirit did it. Another spirit gives it to them. And then certain people that get involved in martial arts, they actually invite a certain spirit to come into them. And that's why you see a lot of these Kung Fu movies and it's real. People jumping up and people doing things. You say, oh, that's just acting. Now, of course, a lot of it is acting to be on the movies, but these things really happen. And we see it all the time. So nobody can really deny it. But the problem is how to get these people delivered. So to me, the only way is to first preach the gospel to them. And unless they're completely controlled by demons to the extent that they cannot even understand or see anything, they need to confess Jesus as their Lord. They need to repent. And if possible, baptize them as soon as possible in water. Because see, this is a part of salvation, repenting and being baptized in water. And then you will quite often find you don't have to do spiritual warfare or speak to the devils at all. Because they turn to Jesus Christ, those demons will leave. As in the scripture, you know, the devil comes to a house that's clean. And so he will bring seven more devils with him. So once a person gets clean, they need to get filled with the Holy Spirit. So one of my main ministries has been in China, you may know, is praying for people to receive the Holy Spirit. And so when we minister to people, to sinners, and some of them even are demon-possessed, we, first of all, Call on them to call unto the name of the Lord and repent. Now, there are cases where people are in such a state of demon possession where they cannot call on the name of the Lord. That's when we need to take spiritual authority in the name of Jesus, cast out demons. And we've done that, but it's not easy. And it's sometimes dangerous because these people will have supernatural strength. And we've had like one man was maybe about 110 pounds, a young student I was uh, praying with and this uh, Gong Fu demon that gave him this power for martial arts came and 10 of us couldn't hold the guy down and he threatened to kill me but the Lord didn't let that happen after about an hour and a half finally the demons left and, and, and he said I heard what you were saying but I couldn't speak there was some inside of me that was controlling me and this has been going on for many many years but praise the Lord and the next thing we did immediately we prayed for him to be filled with the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues because then a, another spirit the holy spirit came into them you see so where that vacancy was because the demon spirit left we need the spirit to uh, come into them so that's the way that i think you understand if you're a missionary you need to do this you know a lot of missionaries come from these evangelical doc, uh, denominations missionary alliance and baptists and in theological school they're told there's no such things as demons and gifts of the Holy Spirit and the supernatural. Well, they have to change their theology very soon because they realize without the supernatural, without healings and without miracles, you cannot really preach the gospel in these places because these other religions, you know, Hindus and Buddhists and Taoists and, you know, Lamanists, they have tremendous power from the devil. Don't think that the devil doesn't give people power. He does give them power. And they can tell your future. They can tell fortunes. They have like what we call the word of knowledge. They can tell you who you are and where you've been and everything you've done in your life. It's really amazing. Now, I'm not saying that they the same thing as the word of knowledge in the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit gives us so much more. But the devil knows a lot about you. And so this is, to me, this is true spiritual warfare is not challenging the principalities and powers in the air. We don't do that. That's not dangerous, and we don't think it's scriptural. But it's preaching the gospel, healing the sick, 
and casting devils out of people. And that's why the church in China, when I first went to China, uh, there was only a few million Christians. In 1949, there was less than one million. Now we have over 100 million Christians. Now I've been to China hundreds of times. I've been in prison about five times in China. In fact, it's, it's not easy to preach in China as a communist nation. But I ask people, why did you become a Christian? And almost everybody said because of some miracle I saw or because in our village demons were cast out of certain people and I saw these miracles and that's why I became a Christian. So this subject is really important because, you know, still most of the people in China and every nation haven't heard the gospel, haven't been evangelized. And so the only way to preach the gospel is through the confirmation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said in Mark chapter 16, these signs shall follow them that believe. And we like to follow the signs and go to the big healing evangelist and the big healing crusade, you know, see God, you know, Benny Hinn or Morsarello who's passed away or anybody doing all the miracles, you know, that's wonderful. You know, we get inspired, but they should be following us. But they will not follow us. It doesn't usually happen in the church, I found. You know, we have a lot of wonderful saints, and we prayed for some and gotten healed. Some haven't gotten healed. But it, it happens almost all the time when you go out and evangelize. So to me, the whole thing about miracles and healing and signs and wonders, it's really it's a gift ministry given to confirm the preaching of the gospel. Amen. Thank you so much. I love that you said that it's first a baptism of the Holy Spirit. So I want to say to everybody that is watching us, we will pray for that. So invite your friends, uh, send them a text, tell them we will pray for a baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you were expecting that or waiting for that for, for years, join us and we will pray for that after and we will pray uh, for the sick and we will cast out demons. And I want to ask you, Ben, you, I know I've been traveling, I, I, I traveled with you and I've seen you in the streets. It was so powerful. Uh, but my question, or maybe the question for the people, uh, how do you cast out demons from a screen? Uh, maybe do, do you have a, a testimony that can share that you can actually raise faith in people that actually can happen today via a YouTube video? Yeah, in fact, um, that's a really great question. You know, we, we all hear the statement, the Holy Spirit needs no time or distance. You know, he, he knows exactly where you are. But I've actually seen several uh, things like this, exactly like this happen, where I've even done self-deliverance on myself as a young believer, you know, like watching somebody preach or something on a, a video and then afterwards praying, okay, Jesus, and I'm going to break these soul ties between me and these women or whatever it was in, in my early days when I was walking with the Lord, you know. And so um, there's no distance. And the thing that we need to understand is that the authority is in the person in the name of Jesus. It's not in whether you're standing within proximity of us. It, it can be very, um, very quickly and very easily done over uh, the internet. And I just received a testimony just a few days ago of somebody whose mother was watching a conference I was doing in Sacramento. And uh, her mother was um, severely, severely oppressed um, with sickness in her back and I just prayed a simple prayer and she was watching from Germany and uh, she was healed completely healed and, and not only healed like I feel a little better she was completely delivered and I've had many many stories like that where people have been watching an Instagram live or something where through the screen they have been delivered of a demon it's come out of them screaming or throwing up and I think that um, you're probably going to get to this question at some point Jeremy where people are going to say well how can a Christian even have a demon and I'm sure we can answer that, but it's not hard when you're oppressed and you've been very oppressed. You don't need a theology. You just need an encounter and you, you, you know you're oppressed if you really are. So we can go into the theology side of that a little bit. But uh, what I'd encourage people is with this, if if you're there and, and Satan's oppressing you and you have no open doors in your life and you want to be freed, Jesus can deliver you very quickly if you are willing to surrender the rights to your life to him just as pastor dennis said give your life to jesus it doesn't matter whether you're right now in russia or you're in america or even maybe you're in china god can deliver you through the screen if you are willing to repent and surrender your life to him so i'm hopeful that today we're going to see a lot of people set free yeah thank you i will ask the question to you paul can we be possessed without knowing it Gosh, that's a that's a, a an interesting and a tricky one. Yes, I I think I think we can, and I think there are there are examples of that. 
Um, we could certainly get into um, some discussions, I suspect, around mental illness, um, uh, where there are some forms of mental illness that are clearly um, or are more organic, but there are other forms of mental illness that are the result of uh, demonization. And one of the classic um, you know, diagnostic features of mental illness is lack of insight. Um, and so I would, I would put that definitely in that category. Um, and, and I think we have a whole world, to be perfectly honest, that do not know Jesus. Um, many people are, are being, you know, guided, controlled, led uh, by, by spirits that have been given permission uh, to enter into their spirit. And they, they don't actually know uh, what they're what they're involved in so I would say that answer is yes um, but at the same time you know we've obviously got to be cautious in those areas because you know there are times when we might think that something is uh, demonic and it's not it's a it's a it's a mental illness or it's a, a feature of a mental illness but yeah my general answer would be yes um, and that's where I mean just listening to Dennis just now you know the the first thing is to preach the gospel is to get that person uh, to line their life up with Jesus Christ and uh, I love it. it's kind of picturing it's like you only have to deal with what's left after that relationship yeah. gets put in place I I think that's a beautiful picture thank you thank you and uh, me me I had like as a Christian also I grew up with the the, the the thought of maybe the, the wrong theology that if I go after deliverance uh, for myself or I actually I go and pray for people, s uh, Satan will come after me. We all know this uh, this uh, this uh, lie that all, everybody uh, believes in. So, uh, Peter, what do you say about that uh, as a pastor, uh, pastoring Christians who sometimes uh, are afraid to go uh, in deliverance or after deliverance? First, I would say one of the biggest tricks of the devil is to bring fear to us. And the biggest fear is fear before uh, regarding the devil. And that's a lie because the one who is in us is stronger than that one in the world. And the fullness of the love of God casts out the fear. That's one thing. And, you know, there are two tricks, actually, that the devil likes to use very much amongst Christians. The one is he tells them, oh, I don't exist. I do. Uh, you cannot see me. I'm not there. And so in the occult, that means in the hidden area, he can do what he wants. <clears throat> the other trick is that he makes himself so big and obvious. And you see a demon behind every bush and every leaf of a tree. And you only see demons and the evil and the you know and you have no joy in life. You are not relaxed. You know both are extremes, and uh, we have to teach the people. We have to teach ourselves the truth of the word of God. And what I see is I I'm completely with what Dennis said. You know to to teach the word of God to the people to bring them uh, into believing God what He says to um, see what is the truth, which because the truth is going to deliver us if we stay in it. So that is the, the first and the most important thing. And already that will, will tell the people, you don't have to fear the devil. You don't have to fear the demons. There is someone who is much stronger than the evil world. And now your life starts to trust the one who has overcome the devil and the demons and the kingdom of darkness. And he has come to deliver you because he loves you, because he wants you to be free. That's in a nutshell what I would tell the people. And um, to encourage each and every one of the ministers, the pastors and all the many, many thousands of, of, of servants of God, uh, which, which are hesitant regarding the invisible evil world i mean from the first page of the bible let's say the second or third page of the bible you see how evil the evil one is he is a liar from the beginning and the more we know him like like paul says we know the strategies of the devil the more we can protect ourselves we can be strong we can be wise we can avoid mistakes 
and I encourage the people just to look into the Bible and to find out what the Bible says about the even the evil a kingdom and the devil and the demons and not fear and, and not to fear but to overcome the fear by the love of God which it pours out through the Holy Spirit in our heart. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Denise, what, what do you think is, is the greatest uh, lie that the enemy uh, uh, made people believe in this generation that we need well, to be set free from? What Peter said, the devil magnifies his work in the minds of people and even in some Christians. They talk more about the devil and his power and these forces of darkness than they do talk about Jesus and preach the gospel. You know, in China, uh, we have the dragon, okay? Now, some people teach the dragon is the devil. Now, that's another theological thing. The Chinese dragon is not the devil uh, because the Chinese dragon is actually probably relates to the dinosaurs or some animal that represented the uh, uh, emperor, you know, a, a beautiful animal. There's nothing evil about the Chinese dragon at all. But uh, a lot of people, because of the translation in English in the book of Revelation, you know, the, the great dragon, the devil, they think that the Chinese dragon is uh, the devil. So these preachers come from England. I, I love England, you know, but some of them are very extreme and anti uh, what not. They're not anti charismatic, they're extreme charismatic. And everything that is Asian and, you know, the art, they think the devil is in it, you know. They, you know, they will go around trying to destroy these things, you know, like a, a, a vase that has a phoenix and a dragon. Now, these are two animals, phoenix and a dragon. And they will, uh, they don't know what the phoenix is, you know, as a, a signal of long life of the dragon. That's of the devil. So it may be a vase that's worth hundreds of thousands of pounds, and they will destroy it because they think they're getting rid of the devil, and that puts fear in the hearts of the people. Actually, we live in Kowloon, and Kowloon means the nine dragons. A, a dragon is a common in our names, uh, like Bruce Lee, his name means Lee, little dragon. See, so people put too much of an emphasis on that, and not enough on Jesus. But once again, you have to preach the word, whether it's healing or getting people delivered from devils, the first thing you can do, unless it's an uncontrollable situation or you need to really take authority, spend some time and give people the word. You know, one of our main ministries is taking Bibles into China. When I went to China in 1978, there wasn't a single Bible in all of China. The communists had destroyed them. So we've taken about 10 million Bibles into China. Because of that, I've been in prison a few times. and It's worth it. And then we give them the Bible, and they read the Bible, they preach the Bible, they believe the Bible, and they do what the Bible says, and that's how people get delivered. Now, even the Bible doesn't talk that much about Satan. He's not a main subject in the Bible. The Bible talks about God and his love and his grace and salvation and the judgment of sin and heaven and hell. It doesn't talk that much about Satan. So we, we tend to, you know what? Very extreme charismatic people like to get on all these very extreme, you know, deep spiritual teachings and what the devil is doing and things like that. Let's stop all of that. Let's get back into preaching the gospel, the, the full gospel, exalting Jesus. And through that, bringing people to Jesus Christ. And don't worry about these articles. You know, if, if they're wrong, God will deal with the people. You know, God doesn't want them to have them. They will feel they shouldn't have them and they can get them. Don't spend all your time, people, throwing out these, you know, Asian arts things and Chinese vases. It's, it doesn't really help people at all. And then you're, you're sometimes offending them because, you know, this is our culture. And a lot of Westerners don't understand that other nations have a different culture. So anyway, the main thing is don't focus on the work of the devil, but focus on the work of the cross and what Jesus has done and is doing. Amen. So true. Thank you so much, Dennis. And Ben, what, what do you, what do you, how do you help people so, um, who have been preaching about deliverance going into seeing a demonstration of power? Sorry, can you re repeat that? I heard it, but did you say how do I help people? Yeah, like. What do you say to people actually who have, who have been maybe pastors or leaders who have been preaching about deliverance? I know a lot of them, but they don't see deliverance in their church or they don't see deliverance when they pray for people. How do you help people going from teaching to uh, to talking about it to a demonstration of power? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I think that you have to settle it in your heart that it's a foundational aspect of the way the kingdom of God expresses itself. So 
I think there's many, many people who don't believe that the power of God is essential. And I think that if you just look at Jesus as our model, that's enough. He is essential. His power is essential. So I would teach him to say, if you want to receive um, more anointing and more authority, you're going to have to do a few simple things. But I'll just read from Luke chapter 10. It's my, it's my favorite, really, discourse from Jesus about deliverance. It says, Luke 10, 18, 19, it says, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And this comes back to our last question. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. So I would teach them and say part of the, your disposition toward the world has to be that you're here to deliver. Jesus came to destroy the works of Satan. So I'd encourage them that way. And the second thing I'd do is I'd make it really lighthearted. When I do deliverance, I do it with a smile on my face. Uh, I tell people, I go, this is normal. I've had demons come out of me. I've had spirit of lust come out of my life. Um, it's very normal. There's a lot of sin, so we shouldn't be spooked by it. And I, I encourage them to teach people to basically unearth and uncover things that the enemy puts in shame and in darkness because you can never really be free until you're actually prepared to be vulnerable. If you protect sin, the enemy will, will find you in that space, in that darkness. So I'd encourage pastors out there, if you're watching, um, just to simply open the scriptures, teach your church, Hey, there may be some of you who are oppressed by the enemy and then go for it. Have faith and uh, remember, you can't outpower the devil. You must out-truth him. And the truth is the authority has been given to us. And so, um, yeah, so that's what I teach people. Just go for it. You don't need a, a perfect doctrine. But I, I do hit on sin a lot because sin is a predominantly open door. And many, many people that I deliver in, in church and out of church have major doors of sin. And I think four, four doors you could probably um, encourage pastors to teach would be the door of unforgiveness and bitterness, the door of lust or sexual immorality, where people have continual sexual immorality in their life, um, uh, the door of the occult, like connections to still the occult, going to psychics once a year or whatever, you know, and then the other one would be fear. It's a pretty major one. Now, these aren't in the Bible in four doors. There's many more, I'm sure. But if you just want to teach practically to help your people to sort of start going, hey, actually, I'm a hypochondriac and terrified of everything there may be a demon behind that and so yeah thank you thank you and you talked about authority and i want to ask the question to paul uh, i always keep the the hard question for paul <laughs> and my question is uh, about authority uh, is there a different level of authority that we have to be aware of when we pray for deliverance like can we pray for some stuff uh, for some people, maybe go to, to some places and actually not have the authority to pray for that. And maybe we should maybe go back in prayer or ask for more. What do you, what do you think about that? Yeah, you are, you're, you're picking out some fun ones for me. Um, I think one place I would definitely start, um, and I'll switch the word just for a moment, to permission. I, th I think there are times when we step outside of what we have permission to do. So sometimes people uh, can get themselves into difficulty because they don't have permission uh, to deal with something. I think in terms of I think in terms of authority, you know, all of us are going to quote when you start talking about authority that Jesus said, you know, I recognize that you're a man under authority. And there is something about that lesson that we all need to understand. And I think that one of the keys to our authority that we have is the way in which we have come into submission to authority. So there's a very strong relationship between the way we live our lives um, under authority, in submission and so I would I would definitely start there. Now, I've, you know, one of the other things I think that people get into trouble is that they, you know, sometimes I'll see people, I think Dennis has already mentioned it, you know, our job's not to tear down principalities. Our, our, our job is to help people disconnect heart connections to the demonic. And when we help people to disconnect their heart connection, then we'll see principalities fall down. Yes. But it's not our job to attack principalities. So we, we have to we have to make sure that we've got permission. We have to make sure that we are people who know how to how to walk in authority. And the other thing I just add, which is, and I'm just reading at the moment, and I'm just kind of fascinated. Um, but reading the the battles in the book of Joshua, which 
you know, I think we can we can draw some good parallels in terms of deliverance ministry. And one of the biggest dangers, I think, is that we think that there is a, a single strategy. There is, there is a single strategy. Listen to God and do what he tells you to do. But it might be different from person to person. So the most important things that I think we can do is make sure we have permission. Make sure that we as individuals are walking in authority and then be people who are constantly listening uh, to God and are not assuming that there is a one model that deals with everything. And I think it's also important for people listening to know, you know, that, that being, you know, demonization has many, many different ways that it manifests in people, that it starts in people. And it, it isn't a one size fits all, but it is a one answer fits all. His name is Jesus. And, and he purchased relationship with us on the cross. So I'm not sure whether I, I probably expanded your, your question a little bit, um, but it would be for me, be, make sure you have permission. Make, make sure you have permission with what you're going after. Don't go after principalities in a region. It, it, it's, it's, not, it's not our job and we're unlikely to have permission. Make sure that you as an individual walk in an awareness of being a man under authority, a woman under authority. Make sure that you're walking in relationship with God so that you're able to hear God give you the strategy for each individual battle. And don't think that there's a one size fits all. Keep going back and saying, what's your what do you want me to do for this person? Because some people can be delivered by a hug. Some people might need a long season of prayer. Some people might just listen to the gospel and say yes to Jesus. And there are many ways. So, so I will continue with this question. What, what do I do if I pray for people and I don't see them delivered? What should I do? Like, should I go back and ask for, like, uh, ask God for more anointing? Should I go back and ask uh, uh, impartation from men's of men and women of God? Or what should I do if I don't see what I want to see? I think that it's always a good thing to be humble enough to ask for help um, and to you know look around and see if there is if there is somebody who has a particular area of anointing in a particular area so seek seek help we were never meant to be you know just the the single person um the other thing i would just i'll put this out there which might be a little a little risky but you know i sometimes see people who are on a deliverance journey themselves and i'm going to paint a little picture that you know the deliverance journey is is one to ten and they get to five in their own life and launch their own ministry, but they haven't actually got the authority in their own life and got completely free from six to ten, if, if I can put it that way. And I think what, what I'm saying with that is don't be too quick to turn your deliverance journey into your ministry journey of, of other people. Uh, be, be cautious about that because that can be a trap for people. But I would say, ask for help. Put your hand up and say, help. Is there anyone around here who, who, who knows more than me, has seen more than me, and, uh, and let's work together. And I, I've done that from the stage at Bethel, actually. Got stuck with something and called one of my brothers up and said, come and help me. Um, so it works. And my last question before we go into into healing uh, healing ministry and, uh, and the ministry and casting out demons to to Peter, uh, if I need deliverance uh, ministry, how do I know if I can go to one of my uh, friends from church or if I need to go to a pastor? Uh, that's a good one too. If I know I need deliverance, I I would go first to somebody who really knows about deliverance. And I really believe in every church, it should be normal that deliverance is part of the daily life. Like we just had an alpha course the other week and um, I, I gave a little talk speech about the Holy Spirit. And then there was a lady, she was here the first time in her life. And she said, uh, husband had died four years ago and she was so sad and so she got into some things and while she was telling us what she did you know immediately we saw he, that that was completely awkward and i just asked her before all the other 15 people present i asked her 
um, um, did you feel a change when you went to these people? She said, immediately. And I knew it was wrong. Not everyone knows, but she knew it was wrong. And then I, I asked her before all the others, first I asked the Holy Spirit, can I do it here openly? He said, sure, sure. So I asked her politely, can I ask God, can I help you that this evil thing comes out of your love? She said immediately, yes, that's my desire. She was there the first time. So everybody was watching, everybody was there. Some people, most of them were new in the church. So I said, let's, let's pray. And so I, 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 I let her in renouncing the spirit. I asked, uh, we asked God for forgiveness, just a little prayer. It was five minutes. And then I asked two co-workers to join. And then we made a little prayer of deliverance. And she was immediately completely delivered. She looked like an angel. She was so happy. That was wonderful. She gave testimony. Everything was fantastic. But the best was all the other guys who were present, all of them, they knew deliverance is real. I can go there. Not only one person, but others too. It's, it becomes a part of the culture of our daily life. And I really believe we need that in all churches. And I really want to encourage all of us to open up, to learn, like, like this seminar here or wherever, from people who know a little bit more than ourselves what's about deliverance. And then the body of Christ will get strong in Europe. And we see some more revival than we see now. And, and the cities will be changed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Peter. And that, this is what we want to see, and that this is what we will see. Uh, after that, we will take a time to, to pray for you. So stay with us. Uh, send uh, the, the link of the video to the people who need, we, you know they need healing, they need uh, deliverance. We will watch a, few, a short video now with a few announcements, and then we'll come back to you uh, very shortly.
And we are back online for the Presence Conference 2021. It's a joy to be with you all. Uh, I am with four men of God, so it's uh, always a privilege to be with you. Paul Mannering from Windsor, England. Peter Ren from Stuttgart. Dennis Balcom from Hong Kong, China. And Ben Chitial from Lerar, Germany. Or maybe from Australia. I don't know what to say. But it's such a joy to have you all with us. And we're going to pray now for the sick. Uh, maybe you already watched the first part with the question and answer. If you missed it, go back and watch it uh, after the, the, the ministry time. It will be so good for you. I know there will be fresh, fresh revelation for you. But now we want to pray. Now we want to invite the Holy Spirit. And I want to ask Dennis, uh, as you said before, the, 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 the most important thing is to ask the Holy Spirit to come. Uh, is to ask uh, for baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I think that's the most important. So could you pray for the people to receive that for fresh baptism? Yes, I would like to pray, and I also encourage you to open your mouth and to receive the Holy Spirit. You see, Jesus, after he rose from the dead, he appeared to his disciples in a room supernaturally. The doors were shut, and he stood there, and he said, Peace unto you. As the Father has sent me, so send I you. And then he breathed upon them and he said, Receive you the Holy Spirit. Now, he had not given the Holy Spirit then. He died, was resurrected. He ascended to heaven. And after 10 days, when they waited in the upper room praying, he sent the Holy Spirit, which is the promise of the Father. And the Bible says there was a wind and the word spirit and wind and breath is the same word. So Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit, but he breathed on the people and he's breathing upon you right now. You see, so just you can even actually being to physically inhale and then the Holy Spirit will put a sound into your mind and you need to speak it. You see, because Praying in the Holy Spirit doesn't come from the mind. It comes from the spirit. I don't know where the spirit is, but certainly not in the mind. You know, just very quickly, we had a brother in our church, loved the Lord. He got brain cancer. We prayed for him for 10 years, and he finally passed away, you know, but God kept him alive for 10 years. But before he passed away, the cancer had destroyed the part of his brain that could speak you know so he he could speak english and chinese but we went to pray for him he could hardly speak at all just stammering but we said okay don't try to say just begin to pray in the spirit he spoke such fluent beautiful tongues and i realized that praying in the holy spirit doesn't come from the mind it comes from the spirit so i want to pray and we all want to pray together for all of you that the Holy Spirit, the breath of the Holy Spirit, he's blowing upon you right now. Okay. But you need to open your mouth. You need to begin to speak out. And God, maybe it just be we call stammering lips, just to syllables at first. But that's the beginning. You see, just like a baby speaks very simple syllables, then after a period of time, speaks whole sentences. And so you need to begin by faith. And that's the beginning of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It sounds so simple. But the things of God are so simple. So we're going to pray for you right now. Heavenly Father, we know that you sent the Holy Spirit. Jesus, you said this is the promise of the Father. Lord, you told your disciples not to leave Jerusalem at that time, but to wait until they received power from on high, which is the Holy Spirit. And we know on the day of the Pentecost, Lord, as they were praying, there was a mighty rushing wind and fires like tongues were upon their heads. And the Bible says they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And from that day, the gospel was preached until today in the world, almost a third of the world's population professed to believe in Jesus. It's through the power of the Holy Spirit. And Paul said, do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. We know that every Christian has the Holy Spirit when they believe. He comes to dwell inside of us. He is the paracletos. He stands beside us. He is our helper. But Lord, you 
promise that we can be baptized in the Holy Spirit. As John said, I baptize you with the water unto repentance, but he that comes after me is mightier than I, and he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And Peter said on the day of Pentecost, repent of your sins, be baptized in water, and you will receive the promise of the Holy Spirit for was given to you, to your children, and to all that are afar off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. And God, you are calling everybody in this healing broadcast tonight. Everybody, all of us, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Those that have been filled already, give us a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. Give us a fresh filling. Give us a fresh anointing, like David said. Anoint me with fresh oil from the throne. Now we speak it. I just want you all just to begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Let's receive right now. Oh, just breathe in the breath of the Holy Spirit. Don't speak in your own language, but speak in the language of the Holy Spirit. Tonight you're going to receive a mighty baptism of the Holy Spirit and a fire. Oh, Lord, now we bless each and every one who is praying and who is receiving today. We believe that the spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall live in our mortal bodies and he shall quicken and make alive this mortal body and bring us not only healing but health. Lord, let your spirit come. Bless your people and we pray in your wonderful name. Amen. 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 Ben, do you, could you could you continue? Could you relieve uh, what you have, what you receive from God for today? Ben. Yes. As people are experiencing uh, the Spirit of God right now, just in their homes or in their cars, wherever they are, I just want to release and pray the authority of the power of uh, deliverance comes over your life, that you would enjoy it, that you would see it as part of God's command and, uh, and that you'd increase in authority. You wouldn't be spooked by it. And then I just want to pray a quick prayer for deliverance. I noticed many of the comments, people are saying, pray for me, I need to be delivered. So we're going to do that as well. But just before we pray for those four deliverance, Jeremy, I hope this is okay. Um, before we pray for this, I want to just encourage you that if there is something in your life of sin, you heard the gospel. Most likely you're a believer watching this. And if you're not a believer and you're tormented, I, we can tell you you've heard it already. Jesus is the answer. Give your heart to him and he'll give you a new life. But if you're tormented and you're a Christian um, by mental illness or by any other thing, just over the next couple of uh, maybe minute or two, I want you to think if there's any sin or any open door in your life, just ask the Holy Spirit. Is there something in my world I need to repent of? Because if you give your rights to your sexuality, for example, you will be delivered not only with, with, from sexual sin or anything, but you'll be delivered from sin, but you'll also be delivered of any demon that was attached to you of lust. I see in the comments there, people are saying, deliver me from alcohol, depression, lust, um, arthritis, uh, all sorts of things here. So I'm just going to pray for just the impartation of boldness. And then we're going to pray for the deliverance. Father, we thank you for everyone watching. Hallelujah. Uh, we pray for the power of your boldness and the command of Jesus to go and deliver people of demons. I thank you, Father, that you would use them widely. I pray that no matter what their background is, what denomination they're from, they would simply see that this is the glorious blessing and great privilege of God to minister the authority of Jesus to help people get free. We pray, Father, in heaven, many, many people across the world that they would catch that boldness. And, Father, we thank you that today they would make a decision in their heart that they would become deliverers, that they'd become people that step into other people's battlefield and help them and bear the burdens of Christ in other people's lives. And I pray for boldness in doing so. I pray you wouldn't doubt the faith and the, the authority Jesus has given to you through the Great Commission. We pray, Father, their mind would be renewed to simple faith. Mm -hmm. trust when they command a demon to leave, it will go. It's not their power. It's the power of the Lord Jesus. So we release that and we loose that right now in the name of Jesus. So right now, I'm also going to pray for people to be delivered of demons. And I just encourage you, put your phone down if you are sitting there. I've seen this happen on a mass scale, literally hundreds at a time being delivered. I trust the anointing and I know you're going to be delivered right now. It's not just going to be, I hope I get free. This is the power of Jesus, not the power of anybody here. 
So as you sit there, I want you just to pray this simple prayer. If there's anything in your life you need to repent of, I want you just to pray this prayer. Pray, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Today, I yield my rights to this sin and just name the sin. I give my rights away to this sin and I ask you to forgive me. And now, pray this as well, in the authority of the name of Jesus, I break any agreement between me and the spirit of, and whatever that sin was, okay? I break any agreement between me and a spirit of gluttony, a spirit of anger, a spirit of, I sense as people here who, who, um, who they're not set, uh, sorry, they're not married yet, but you've maybe slept with your girlfriend or something. Just say, I renounce the soul tie between me and my girlfriend and just repent right now. I renounce any agreement in Jesus' name between me and a spirit of fear. And as you're doing this, we command now every demon spirit that is attached to their life because they have repented. You have no authority to remain here. We command you, all five of us, we come against you in the authority of the name of Jesus and we kick you out of their world now. We command you no matter where you are and how you got in to get out of their lives in the authority of the name of Jesus. And we take captive anything that you've sown in their life. And Father, we ask that you would sow the power of your spirit, your kingdom into their world right now. We command you demons of hell, any demon that's tormenting them with fear, with lust, with depression, with anger, with suicide. We command you in the authority of the name of Jesus, get out of their life today. And we thank you, Father. This is a day of total freedom. There's a woman right now. You've had this thing on your head for years. I just saw it come off you. It was like a snake wrapped around your head. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for that thing that is being delivered from that person. There's a man who has something wrong in the spine. Thank you, Father. We command this heavy spirit that's been around his life. Get off in Jesus' name. And that spirit to you has been a spirit of condemnation. You always think God doesn't love you and there's something wrong with you. We command that spirit of condemnation. Get off in Jesus' name. And any other spirits of self-hatred, self-condemnation, when you are barraging yourself, you think it's your thoughts, we command that all the seeds that are planted by those demons to come out of the mindset of people. We command any kind of spirit of suicide, self-hatred, self-infliction, in the authority of the name of Jesus, get out of their life right now. I thank you, Father God. I know we're about to hear testimonies soon of what's happening. I can sense so much of Jesus' authority just going around the world, just touching people right now. Maybe one of the other guys, you just want to chime in and pray if you're sensing anything. Amen. Lord, I see that one person has a severe condition of tinnitus, that every sound that she hears causes pain to her ears and a lot of disturbances. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over this sister's condition, O oh Lord. We know that by your stripes, she is healed, this uh, Suzanne Josette. Lord, we pray for uh, Suzanne that she will be completely healed from these pains and these sounds in her ears. Lord, we thank you that you said that you will put none of the diseases of the Egyptians upon your people, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Lord, we speak the word of healing to this sister and to all that are, are suffering similar to Nidus and uh, sounds in their head, O oh Lord, that there will be peace in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I can see a woman who had incredible pain in her soul over a long, long period of time in the past. And during this time of incredible pain, there came a power which went into your back. And it was like the lady in the Bible who had 18 years a demon in the back. And Jesus came and he said, woman, you are loose, you are free. And I feel like Jesus tells this lady who had so much pain in her soul that you are loose now by the power of the Holy Spirit from, from this power of darkness in your back. And you can get up now in this very moment and you can bend again and you are delivered from that in Jesus' name. And then I saw another person there was an issue in the eye, but it was it has nothing to do with the muscles or with, with some physical thing, 
but I, con I could see a demon, a spirit, very small, and he, it was like he influenced the eye all the time. And I know this, this power of darkness has to go now. And while we pray, and I want to pray for this person and the eye will open. And in the name of Jesus, your eye condition, which is, which comes from an evil spirit, I command you to go now in the name of Jesus and your spirit, we bind you and you flee because you feel the power and the fire of God coming over you and you leave this person now in the name of of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And thank you, Father, for the power we can feel even in our body, the power of your deliverance. And we love you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There are a couple of people on there asking for prayer for uh, infertility. They want children. And uh, my wife was healed uh, many years ago of infertility and um, gave us our second son and the last 10 years uh, sue and i have prayed nearly everywhere we've been uh, for people to have babies and we've seen uh, where the problems the man healing we've seen uh, women get pregnant after 10 11 12 years we've seen people using in vitro fertilization uh, at their seventh attempt um, come to us for prayer and we've seen the breakthrough and one of the things that we choose to do is to declare um, we don't as much pray we declare and we we declare because that is the way of the kingdom and the way the undo lies is you declare truth and many times people are believing a lie I and mean, it's not an accusation it's a tough journey um, so I, if if that's you or if you have if you're watching this and you have children who can't get pregnant or you have a close friend who can't get pregnant i want you to stand for them but here's what i want you to do i want you to tell them that you did that after i after i've prayed and declared over you uh, there are some wonderful testimonies uh, in many places of uh, people being healed and i i personally believe that this is original design the original design of man is go forth and multiply and we talk too much about original sin and we miss original design so i want to pray over you and declare over you and i declare this that you will conceive carry deliver healthy full-term babies that children of people that are standing now and agreeing friends of people will conceive carry deliver healthy full-term babies Amen. in the name of jesus and according to the testimonies that sue and i carry which are the spirit of prophecy which means do it again god do it again and bring bring breakthrough for any condition that is getting in the way of people getting pregnant i declare this now in jesus name and i i honestly with all my heart i know that there will be people on here who will be pregnant as a result of this moment not because of me but because of him and who he is and what he does in jesus name amen amen, amen. 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 Thank you, God. I saw somebody sitting before the TV set or even a computer, and there was witchcraft coming out of the TV. Something happened, and the person who was sitting before the TV set was bewitched. And from that time on, something went wrong, and even some sickness came into your body. And about, I believe now is the minute of healing for you because the power of that witchcraft is going to be broken. And if that is you, whatever happened through the TV uh, show or whatever happened, just renounce because you, you're going to remember now something. Renounce that and say, Jesus, forgive me. And then we will pray for you. And the power of witchcraft is going to be broken over you. Amen. Life. We pray together Amen. for you in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Amen. All the power of witchcraft, all the power of manipulation of precious people sitting before the TV set or wherever, 
we pray your power, your evil spirit, in the name of Jesus, and we command you to leave these precious people now by the authority of the name of Jesus. And we bless these people now with healing Amen. power from Jesus. That sickness which has come out of that shall go now in Jesus' name. And I, I speak to you, be delivered, be free of that sickness and the joy of God and what he has done for you be with you in Jesus' name. Amen. I feel I have a word for some people that have diabetes, type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure. It's a very common uh, phenomenon, sickness in people. In fact, we know recently of some ministers that have passed away, God-fearing men. Now, they were all overweight. They didn't have a healthy lifestyle. They were great preachers, but they died of diabetes. Or if they had diabetes type 2 and uh, got COVID-19, it was much more dangerous. Now, uh, I want to pray for you, but I want to tell you, you change your lifestyle. This, You will be healed if you change your lifestyle. And I would suggest, I just feel from the Lord, you need to go on a fast. As you go on a fast and as you lose weight and exercise, your diabetes will go away because it's, it's caused by uh, unhealthy lifestyle. Now, there's a scripture in uh, Isaiah 58, just before I pray, is he said, is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness and to undo the heavy burdens and all these wonderful things where you, you're fasting for other people, you're fasting to see a spiritual breakthrough, uh, you're not fasting so you'll be more, you know, slim and healthy, but that'll happen but you're fasting because you want to see a breakthrough in your life but then he says in verse 8 then your light shall spring forth like the morning your healing shall spring forth speedily in our church we begin every year with 21 day of fast as some people like because i'm used to it all fast just with water maybe in 40 days a lot of people are not used to it. We do a daniel fast but we've had very few sick people because our people are fasting all the time it's a part of our lifestyle you know our church is 52 years old and we haven't had that many people really die of sickness and you know Chinese they themselves you know uh, they try to get a lot of exercise and keep active you know and we don't hardly have anybody overweight in our church and so we hardly ever heard of diabetes but I go to the west and it's so common so I just want to it's, it's, I'm not a doctor you know but I know by experience a healthy lifestyle and that includes of course positive thinking, you know, praying in the Holy Spirit, praying in the Holy Spirit. I shared on a video for this conference, you know, praying in the Holy Spirit does actually bring a healing to you, emotional healing, but emotional healing will bring physical healing because a lot of sickness comes from our mind. But I just believe that God wants to heal you if you have high blood pressure, if you have diabetes, or if you have heart condition. And I'm going to pray in the name of Jesus. I pray for these that are afflicted by these very common diseases, O oh Lord, that have to do with our lifestyle, that there will be healing. And these wonderful brothers and sisters, they will change their lifestyle, learn to eat well, learn to sleep well, get good exercise, go on a regular fast, that they can keep their weight in the control, O oh Lord. And you said that these sicknesses will leave them. And I pray in your wonderful name. Amen. I mean, I know there's a lot of people also asking for, for prayer, for healing. And I, one of the questions in the comments was, uh, can uh, can uh, a healing be blocked by, or deliverance block uh, the, the healing? So I know it's a common question, but I, I just want to, I just want us to pray for that. Just want us to, to pray for the, the spirit of sickness and infirmity to leave, or even also the spirit of unbelief. So Ben, could you could you pray for that and, uh, and take authority for that and, and release healing over the people? Yeah. Yeah, certainly. And while we pray, if you feel, if you have shoulder pain, say in your left shoulder, and as we pray, you feel it move into your right shoulder, that's how you most definitely know it's a demon. And a lot of people have movement in, in their body when they uh, pray for healing. And so um, I've learned a lot from Kenneth Hagen. He's a great resource if you want to look into his teachings about that. But we'll pray right now. Father, we thank you that you delivered us from the spirit of infirmity. We thank you that the bronze serpent was held up there, that the whole children of Israel, everybody in the covenant of God would be delivered of sickness and of demonic oppression through sickness. So, Father, we thank you. We command every spirit of infirmity, get out of their lives now. Any person that is oppressed with any kind of sickness, any form of even depression, anxiety, uh, any form of sickness in the blood, particularly Pastor Dennis just prayed, blood 
uh, diseases, and I pray, I feel the same. I feel something to do with the blood. In the name of Jesus, we command every Amen. spirit that has influenced uh, the, the digestive tracts of people, the blood, get out of their life now in the authority of the name of Jesus. There's someone watching, there's a spirit. You think it's a problem in your left foot. There's a spirit. That's why your left foot has all this pain going through. It's a demon. We command you, get off her foot now in the authority of the name of Jesus and never come back upon that person's left foot. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, great King. We thank you, Jesus, that you delivered us from not just healing, but spirits of infirmity. We command anybody watching now, any spirit that is in their life of sickness, we command you to leave. There's a person who's watching who gets reoccurring like vomiting, like they get sick really easily or something happens with them where they just vomit a lot. Uh, we command you, evil spirit that is in their life, it's come through fear, it's come into your world through fear, and you need to renounce fear and stop worrying all the time about life. You need to give your trust to God, re repent of this, don't worry anymore, but that's a, a demon is attached to that fear, and, and that's why you throw up a lot. We command the spirit to get out of your life in the authority of the name of Jesus right now. We pray, Father, for everybody around the world watching from this point on, they won't just pray for the sick, they will deliver the sick when there's a Amen. demon. They'll have greater discernment from this point on in the authority of Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want us also to go after something specific. It's uh, it's the spirit of depression. I don't know if you if it's the same in other countries, but in Switzerland, it's said that one on on uh, on five people or five people are uh, suffering from depression because of the, the 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 COVID and the pandemic and all of that. And I know it's a very very important topic now for the people. So could we just uh, go after that? Peter? Could you pray for that for for everybody that is suffering from depression for uh, and for all of that? Yeah, I like to do that. Before I want to say there are people who should take out of their house some statues or carpets which are not good for their life. And they are, there are things, I could see it, which attract demons into the houses. And like, like in Ephesus, people threw out these things. It could be New Age books or witchcraft books or something like that. Um, and that is very important to, to stay delivered, to put these things out of your house, of your apartment. Um, and if you ask God, he's going to show. I know. If you have even seen things in plants, whatever, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy what's going on. But God is going to show you. And uh, sometimes depression has to do also to do with these things. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for complete deliverance and healing of the soul. And there's so much pain in this society, in this, in, in this time we are living in. So much injustice, so much desperation, but also so much sin and hardness and so much refusing of doing your will. So I ask you, Father, for your mercy now, for, for your kindness, for all the people suffering from depression. And in Jesus' name, we come against you, spirit of depression. We come over you now because God has given us authority over you. And you, spirit of depression, of heaviness, of, of sadness, some have years of sadness, you have to go now because we declare your power has been broken at the cross of Calvary. And we, we sprinkle the blood of Jesus over you now. We sprinkle the blood of Jesus over your soul. And Father, fill them now with your joy, with your peace, with your righteousness in the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. I'll let you flow if you have words, if you want to pray for something specific. There were a couple of, um, there was a question on there about connection of uh, deliverance. Um, and I, I just want to just touch on that and then pray. Um, I think sometimes we make agreements, uh, agreements about unforgiveness of others. Uh, we make agreements about self-hatred. 
um, and and sometimes those things they don't always but sometimes those things are the root of our sickness I personally know somebody healed of multiple sclerosis as a as a result of an inner healing week that they went on and they were completely healed uh, I've, it was a self-hatred issue that was undone I've yeah. seen people with uh, musculoskeletal problems healed because they forgave somebody or forgave themselves and uh, so I just want to challenge anyone on there just check that you have not made an agreement with with a lie and that you're not walking in either unforgiveness of others or self-hatred and check that and and just deal with that and separate that and then i just want to what just one moment one person on there pray it was about down syndrome and god has given me an assignment to pray for down syndrome and i've seen a number of children uh, their worst symptom healed i've seen uh, children that couldn't speak be able to speak i've seen social skills uh, grow rapidly um so i i know that that he does this so anybody on here that and there was at least one person i want i just want to agree with you that that worst symptom bows the knee to jesus if it's speech and they can't speak then declare that they speak and stay with that and i want to give you one verse matthew 21 21 it's intriguing it's hidden in the bible 21 is the number of the chromosome where there is an extra chromosome and would you believe that god hid a verse in matthew matthew 21 21 if you have faith and say to this mountain be removed down syndrome is a mountain and it, there it is and i just want to give you this as a strategy declare the worst symptom stops and declare matthew 21 21 and i agree with that person on here that their their child's down syndrome will be healed symptom by symptom they will speak they will develop they, their cognitive skills will develop and their social skills will develop in the name of jesus amen amen, amen. I see uh, Daniel Tang, who's a Chinese Buddhist, and he has pains. Just want to give a word about this. In Buddhism and Hinduism, there's a lot of idols. Now, Paul says that the non-believers, the heathen, when they offer to idols, they're actually offering to demons. And so there's demonic forces behind them. But, you know, a lot of people in the West through New Age are bringing these things into their home. They have this philosophy and these beliefs. Now, in China, when a Christian becomes a person becomes a Christian, the first thing they do is to remove all the idols. Now, they have a God shop. Now, if it's not yours, if it's grandma's God shop, don't don't remove it unless she believes in the Lord Jesus. We don't want to have more problems in the family. But we remove the God shelves and we have to denounce those things. And so a lot of this comes from, from New Age and from all these crazy new religions that are coming. There's really idols. I mean, there's really demons be, between behind these idols. So just a word uh, for this uh, Chinese brother, you know, that maybe there's something in his life because he's a Buddhist. And I mean, in Hinduism, there's hundreds of millions of, of different gods in Buddhism. There's so many of them, and the Lord wants you to be set free. Just repent of all of this and live, live a clean life. Get rid of all idols, and we have a lot of idols, you know, maybe our car or something else in our own life, but get rid of the idols. Lord, I just pray for this, uh, Brother Daniel Tang, that you will completely heal him and set him free because he wants to serve you. He wants to be a servant of God, and he needs deliverance, and we speak deliverance in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I still have something on my heart very strongly. Perhaps we all of us can pray for that. Um, it's, it has to do with sexual abuse of so many. It's a time we are living in where so many young people are sexually abused yes uh, even in schools th through medias through whatever and it's a mess in germany every fourth girl is being sexually touched or whatever till she becomes 11 years that's crazy and uh, perhaps we can speak a, a prayer of deliverance for all of those who have suffered so much and nobody knows and it's hidden it's it's 
you know, and they suffer so much and they try everything to get out. And if that it's you, I, I just want to tell you that God knows how you feel. God knows what happened to you and he loves you so much. And we all together now, we want to pray for you that the hand of the living God comes over you and that you can experience the touch from heaven which brings you into freedom. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we all together, we pray for those who are misused, abused, who are sexually abused and feel like in a prison and cannot get out somehow. We ask you now for your mighty, mighty hand that you smash the power of the evil one who destroyed so many souls and feelings and Father, I speak freedom into the souls of so many. Freedom from the involvement of these four things, thoughts, feelings in Jesus' mighty name. And I want to tell you something. There is God's hand on you now. You understand very well what we are talking about. And I want to tell you the hand of the Father is with you. And he will not take this hand away. There are things to come which help you further in your life with God. Just look for that. God has already prepared more help for you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Peter. I, I wonder, I, we, we will be soon finished, but I want for, uh, before we, uh, we end this talk show that we pray for impartation for people. I think that uh, it's very important that they receive also that, they receive the, the boldness, they receive also the revelation, fresh, fresh revelation. So uh, could we pray uh, one after the other and just release uh, uh, what we, we feel that we need to be to, to release? Ben, could you, could you start and, and, and pray for uh, what I love, uh, what I, I know you carry the, the most is the, the, um, to be uh, free from the fear of men. And mm -hmm. I think it's the impartation that in deliverance people need also. Yeah, sure. Father, we give you praise uh, that you've given us. You haven't given us the spirit of fear. You've given us the adoption spirit. We're your sons, your daughters. We pray today, whoever's watching all around the world, we ask you, Father in heaven, that you would deliver us from the power of the spirit of the fear of man and that you would release impartation as people are watching into their spirit that they would become very confident and very secure in their identity in their value and in the beauty of their relationship between Jesus and them. And Father, we release that grace over people watching in every nation. Uh, Father, we thank you. There is no need to fear human opinion above the opinions of God who's spoken over their existence. So Father, we praise you for that. And I pray Jesus that every person watching, that they would be in health and prospering even as their soul prospers. And that this wouldn't just be about deliverance one time, but that they would anchor their life upon the truth of your scripture and what Jesus has done in dying and rising from the dead for them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Lord, we pray for impartation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit to your children that are being baptized in the Holy Spirit. As Paul said to Timothy, to not neglect the gift, stir up the gift that was given by the laying on of hands of the press tree and by prophecy though we cannot physically lay hands upon your children today but by faith we speak the word O oh lord gifts of the holy spirit will be imparted not only will they be healed but they will have the gift of healing not only will they hear it from god but they will speak the word of god in prophecy Prophesy the word of God. Speak the word of God. Now release these gifts to your children in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, I want to declare over everyone four, four things in Scripture which I believe we need to believe. Firstly, Jesus said that we would do the greater works. Amen. I just want to declare over you faith to believe for the greater works. And the word of God says that we go from glory to glory. Amen. One of the keys to increase, to revival, is never stopping asking for more. Amen. Glory to glory. And my favorite Old Testament verse says there will be no end to the increase of his government. Increase, increase. And Paul repeats what Isaiah said. I has not seen, nor ear heard, 
nor heart conceive what God has prepared for those that love him. I prefer, declare over you greater works, glory to glory, increase of his government and greater revelation and that you will not only walk in it, but that you will create a culture and an atmosphere around you where people Amen. believe it with you in Jesus name. Amen. 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 And Holy Spirit, thank you for your presence. Amen. And we ask you now that you glorify Jesus and the Father in the hearts and lives of each Amen. and every one present. We ask you that everybody <laughs> is used mightily to deliver others because we have experienced deliverance ourselves. Amen. We bless each and every one with your power, with your boldness, with your love for the people, and with your freedom to do the will of the Father as long as we have time on this earth. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 I want to bless also everyone that is watching with a, with a strong community, uh, spirit-filled to, to grow together. I know it's so important now as we are all alone behind our screens, and I want to bless every one of you with a, a community of believers that will help you grow and that will help the church grow in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, really, it was an honor to have you, Paul, Peter, Dennis, Ben. Really such a joy. Uh, I liked to talk about that. I would have loved to ask you a, a thousand more questions. I had some hard ones for, for Paul, uh, some others, but I will keep them for another time. But uh, it was really a joy mm -hmm. to do that. And I hope we'll be able to do that again sometime. Mm -hmm. And uh, just bless wow. you, bless all of you, blessing to everyone who is watching. Uh, we, uh, we invite you to follow us in, uh, in 30 minutes, actually, for a talk, a face to face with Jean Luc and Benny In. It will be amazing. So I invite you to join us. And tonight for the Miracles and Healing Night at 8 p.m. Um, Europe time. And uh, if you know people that need healing, that need to hear the, 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 the preaching of the word, that need to hear about Jesus, send them the link of the video. They will be blessed. They will be touched by, by God. We know that. Amen. Thank you so much. See you very soon, I hope, and bless you. Bye-bye. Good to be with you. Bye -bye. Bless you. Bye-bye.